mode. Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's webinar which is run by Southern Beef Technology Services, SBTS, and Tropical Beef Technology Services, which is TBTS. Uh, both SBTS and TBTS uh, is a joint initiative of participating breed societies, both in the north, the tropical breeds in the north, and the breeds in the southern areas of Australia. Uh, our main role is in the extension of breed plan and related genetic technologies that are available out to, to seed stock producers. Um, my name is Philip Mann and I'm a technical officer with TB Test based in Rockhampton and I will be assisting Andrew Byrne who is a technical officer with uh, SBTS based out of Armadale present tonight's topic, performance recording with breed plan. Uh, this is the first webinar in a course of webinars titled breed plan from go to woe. Uh, this course of webinars aims at providing an understanding of breed plan and the traits that can be recorded for genetic evaluation. It assumes no prior knowledge of breed plan and will be most helpful to those of you who are thinking about starting up performance recording with breed plan or if you are a current breed plan member, it would be relevant to you for brushing up on, on what traits to record and how to go about recording them. The course runs over the next five weeks. Um, and the topics that we covered, apart from tonight's topic, will include the understanding and recording of information for the birth traits, uh, weight traits, carcass traits, as well as recording information for fertility traits and docility. And finish up at the end of July looking at the, some of the newer EBVs and how DNA, the current DNA information is or can be incorporated into to the breed plan analysis. Um, before I hand over to, to Andrew, I'd just like to go through a couple of housekeeping issues. Um, many of you will be, be new to the webinar technology, so just to explain what will be happening tonight, um, Andrew will be bringing up a number of slides which he will talk you through. Um, we hope these, these slides will come up automatically so you don't have to do anything except sit there and have a, have a listen to what Andrew has to say. Um, we hope this will take about 30 to 45 minutes um, and we'll be breaking periodically for questions. If you are having any technical diff difficulties at this stage, uh, could you please call 0418 268 158 and Christian Duff will be on standby to, to assist you with any problems you may be having. Um, as I said, we will be breaking for questions. Um, you, you will not be able to, to speak to, to Andrew or myself, but if you would like to submit a question, you can do so through your questions field, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, simply write in your, type in your question in the, in the field and click send, and that will submit a question through to us, which we will we'll break uh, during the presentation and try and answer. If your question box should disappear at any stage during the presentation, just click on the double arrows and it will reappear again for you to type the question in. Um, with that, I'd like to hand over to Andrew to, to go through tonight's presentation, performance recording with Greek. Okay, thank you very much, Philip, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, we've got a, a good group in tonight, uh, uh, over 100 people in listening tonight, so that's uh, really pleasing to see. Um, as Philip said, this is going to be our uh, first webinar in this webinar course, and it's particularly going to be targeted at those members who may not be recording with Breed Plan yet, and are just considering what kind of are the reasons to record uh, with Breed Plan and the benefits that it offers them as a seed stock operation and then focus more on what are the steps you need to follow to start recording with Breed Plan, the kind of recording process that you follow once you join, and then moving forward, some of the considerations that you need to make when recording um, with Breed Plan and recording your performance information. So for those of you that, that have been um, a member of Breed Plan for a while, some of this will uh, be second nature to you, uh, but then obviously in the, the future webinars that we run through, we'll be going through more of some of the uh, considerations you need to make when recording those different traits and what the different EBVs are about.
So that's really where we're heading tonight. Uh, we've had a few people that are just still logging in at the moment. So as, I, as Philip encouraged you to, I would encourage you to submit your questions as we go along and we'll stop periodically and, and try and address most of those. So to start with, I guess we, we need to answer the question or address the question as to why record with Breedplan? As a seed stock herd out there, what benefits does Breedplan offer you? Um, and why should you consider recording with it? And I think to, to answer this and to start off um, addressing this type of issue, we need to consider some of the fundamental objectives that you have as a seed stock operation. And if you consider your herd, um, really I guess when you're looking at your breeding program and selecting the size and dams for use within your breeding program as a seed stock herd, your primary objective is to make genetic improvement. So that is to improve the genetics of your herd and to make them the best that they possibly can be. And if we consider where the seed stock um, herds fit within the structure um, of the Australian beef industry, then their main objective is to produce the best possible genetics that we can, which then flow down and improve the profitability of the commercial sector. So when we say we want to make genetic improvement, what are we really talking about? Really, if I've just stolen a definition here, if you like, out of one of the textbooks to try and address this, and there are many different definitions of genetic improvement, but if we come back to really what our objective is as a seed stock herd when we're selecting our size and dams for use within our breeding program, is basically to increase the average genetic value of the offspring so that it's higher than the average genetic value of the previous generation from which we selected the parents. So in layman terms, I guess we're looking there and saying we're trying to produce calves which are of higher genetic merit than the parents from which we're selecting. And if we consider that genetic improvement, we can make our genetic improvement when we're making any particular mating for either an individual trait or across a different range of traits. And I think as seed stock producers, you'll all be out there and you'll be trying to uh, improve a range of traits simultaneously at the same time and putting different emphasis on those traits depending on their different impact or influence on the profitability of the commercial beef operation. So these are just some of the, the concepts I think we need to consider um, when we start to look at where breed plan fits within what we're trying to do as a seed stock herd. And if we take that a little bit further and say, well, our primary objective is to make a genetic improvement, what are some of the factors which go in and actually influence the rate of genetic improvement that we're making? Are we making genetic improvement and how quickly are we progressing or changing the genetics of our herd and improving them? And one of the, if we look at the different factors, and there are a range of different factors which do influence the rate of genetic improvement, one of the major ones is this concept of selection differential or selection intensity. And they basically both refer to the same thing. And really what they're looking at is how superior the genetics are of the animals that we retain as parents or the animals that we select relative to the animals that were available uh, for selection. And if you look, there's a, there's a graph there on the page which just shows you, if you like, um, and I'll put my mouse up here and hopefully you can see it on the screen, but that may be the average genetic merit of the animals which were available for selection in the middle here. So the animals are following a, a normal kind of bell curve. The animals that we chose for selection were up here and our selection differential or our selection intensity is the difference between the two different groups of animals. And obviously the higher the selection differential so or the selection intensity, then the more genetic improvement that we make. Um, so taking that back to, to a breed plan point of view, I guess, in terms of our, our breeding program and what we're trying to achieve as a selection, uh, as a seed stock herd, the success of our breeding program is very heavily influenced by the success of our selection decisions in maximising that selection differential. So making sure that we're selecting parents or the animals that we select as parents are of the highest unique merit as possible. And if we're making successful selection decisions, then ultimately we'll have quite a successful breeding program. And this is exactly where breed plan fits in and what use it can be to you as a seed stock herd is to come through and actually increase the accuracy of your selection decisions so that you can ensure that the selection decisions you're making are the best ones that you possibly can. And by that way, you'll make the, the most unique improvement that you possibly can. So if we take that further and say, well, what is breed plan? For those of you that may not be too familiar with it, breed plan, as we said, is a tool 
but it is effectively just a genetic evaluation uh, system for beef cattle. So it's the genetic evaluation which has been adopted by the National Beef Recording Scheme in Australia and also has been adopted in, in a number of other countries around the world. I think the breed plan technology is now utilised in around 13 different countries. All breed plan does is provides us with estimated breeding values for a range of different traits. So on an individual animal it will estimate what their breeding values are um, across but we're based on the information which has been provided by the seed stock sector for a range of different traits across weight, milk, fertility and carcass attributes of that animal. And breed plan at the current stage is producing 18 different EBVs across those different fields um, and also producing a number of newer EBVs, uh, around 10 newer EBVs which we'll obviously cover throughout this whole webinar course. In terms of the organisations that are involved um, in providing the, the breed plan genetic evaluation to the Australian seed stock um, sector, the first one that you need to be aware of when you're considering your, your breed plan recording is the Animal Genetics and Breeding Unit or AGBU um, and they are a, a, an organisation that's based in Armidale, uh, in Northern New South Wales that effectively does the research and development behind um, the breed plan evaluation. So they uh, do the, do the computer programming and actually develop the breed plan software. That software is then delivered to the next organisation, the Agricultural Business Research Institute or ABRI um, and it is the commercialiser of the breed plan tech, um, technology um, in the Australian beef industry and also has a, has a worldwide licence. So ABRI is the uh, company which you'll interact with uh, when you're recording with Breed Plan and it's, it's the organisation which you send your, your performance information into and they'll also return your updated EBVs as you go along. The other organisation we need to consider is Meat and Livestock Australia. So all the funding behind the breed plan evaluation um, is provided through from, from levy funds uh, from Meat and Livestock Australia and also the University of New England, both ABRI and AGBU are uh, located here at the University of New England um, out of Armidale in Northern New South Wales and it's where all the breed plan software and breed plan evaluation is serviced from. So that's just an idea as to some of the organisations uh, which when you start considering your breed plan recording that will be responsible for providing that service to you. And the, of those, the predominant one that you'll interact with will be ABRI. So we've said the breed plan goes through and actually provides us with um, estimates of an animal's breeding values or EBVs on our particular animals. And the benefit to us as the sea stock herd, as we started to talk about at the start, is that those um, EBVs are currently the best prediction that modern technology can provide of the animals within your herd in terms of the genetics that they offer. And by using those EBVs, we can then make the most uh, or the best and most informed selection decisions of the animals from the animals that are available, making sure we're retaining the best possible animals as parents and therefore making the most genetic improvement. Now importantly the EBVs or the estimates of the animal's breeding value which are produced is all calculated from real information. So while the breed plan evaluation is quite a sophisticated model, it is purely driven by the pedigree and performance information which is supplied by stud breeders. So all that information that's recorded out there in the industry is put through by ABRI through that breed plan evaluation to actually calculate those estimated breeding values. And the real benefit of those breeding values is that they describe the genetics of the animal independent of the environment in which they've been run. So obviously if we look at the, the performance of an animal that, um, that we might be able to visually assess or have raw performance available on, that the, what we're observing is a combination of both the genetics of that animal and the environment in which that's been run. And the environment in which it's been run can often cloud our selection decisions and may mean that the selection decisions we make are not the best ones that we could have made and this is where the EBVs fit in uh, to actually just describe the genetics of those animals um, irrespective or independently of the environment influ or environmental influences um, on their performance to make sure we're making the most informed decisions that are available. So I guess if we look here at, at we've looked at what the role of breed plan is what are the benefits to you as a seed stock herd of actually recording with breed plan? And as we've talked about, 
the primary tool or primary role of Breedplant is to increase the accuracy of your selection decisions so that you're making the most genetic improvement that you can. As part of that, you'll be able to access EBVs on all your animals within your herd. So once you join up to Breedplan, you'll be provided with a full range of estimated breeding values on all your sires, all your dams, and all your calves. There may, it may take a little while to get that, as, as you require um, a, a limited amount of um, pedigree and performance information so that the EBVs which appear are of sufficient accuracy for them to actually be reported by Breedplan but once you're up and running, you'll be able to access EBVs on all your animals. And that'll obviously be of great assistance to you when you're making your selection decisions. There are some offshoots of having those estimated breeding values. For the breed plan evaluations which we're running at the moment are what we call uh, group breed plan analyses. So they allow you to compare your animals directly to all the other animals within Australia, and in most cases in New Zealand as well, animals of your breed. And that provides you with a real ability to go through and benchmark the genetics of your animals against the entire breed and see how you're performing and possibly identify areas that um, you can improve and other areas which you, you're going particularly well in your animals are, are very strong in. You also are able to, um, pro have through, through the information which is fed back from breed plan, assess the changes in your genetics for each of the important traits over time. So you can start to see, well, what's, what's the trends that we're seeing? Am I increasing the weight uh, genetics within my herd or uh, the carcass genetics and, and those type of things? And so with each of the, the reports which are sent out to you uh, from breed plan, once you're up and running, you will be provided with an indication of the change in your herd and also how that change reflects the change for your particular breed. So you can use that as a very useful benchmarking type of tool to um, assess your genetic on your breeding, your genetics in your herd and your breeding program. The other major advantage, I suppose, of joining Breed Plan is, is once you have um, a recording with Breed Plan and have EBVs on your animals, you then have the ability to access a range of other powerful genetic technologies which are out there. And those um, are not limited to, but include things like selection indexes, um, take stock, which is an across herd benchmarking program in, in a bit more detail, some mate selection type tools such as uh, total genetics resource management, and in time, the marker-assisted EBV. So to get the most out of the, the DNA technology, which is emerging as a very powerful technology, um, will be through the combining that DNA information with the pedigree and performance information which exists within the breed plan analysis to actually calculate marker-assisted EBVs, which are of higher accuracy and therefore allow you to make the, the best possible selection decisions that you can. And lastly but not least, um, the, the other benefit of breed plan is because you're getting EBVs which provide an indication of what the genetics of your animals are relative to the entire breed, they do provide you with a, a useful marketing tool or an objective measurement that you can put out there to demonstrate to your commercial clients exactly what the genetics of your herd are and the genetics of your individual animals. And we're starting to see, uh, particularly in southern Australia, um, a, a real demand for this information from the commercial sector. And a, a recent a survey which was conducted by one of our larger breed societies in uh, Southern Australia indicated that 95% of their commercial clients were after this type of information to be provided um, on their animals when they were purchasing them. So it's also a, a very powerful uh, marketing tool which is available to us. So I might just uh, break now. I think we've got a, a few questions in. Generally, I think that that's my answer uh, to why record with breed plan and what the benefits are that it offers you. But really, just to summarise that, um, the main purpose is to really increase the accuracy of your selection decisions so that you make sure the animals that you're retaining um, as sires and dams are the best possible and therefore you're making the most genetic improvement that you can. So I'll, uh, I'll pass back over to um, Philip to uh, see what questions have come in. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Um, just one question: There was uh, how how many records of generations to establish a reasonable accuracy? Um, I guess that's that's a little bit difficult to answer. It uh, depends on the depends on the trait that you're looking at. Um, traits of, of higher heritability, such as your growth traits, uh, will be will develop a, a accuracy a lot, lot quicker than your 
the less heritable traits. Um, we will be covering that as we go through the the production traits uh, in more detail over the next uh, next five weeks. Um, so I might just leave that one until we cover those in, in uh, later sessions. Um, but if you want to get a, a more direct answer on that, uh, you can contact uh, Andrew or myself um, after the session uh, concludes. Um, that's about all the questions we have at the moment, Andrew, so we might keep going. Okay, thanks, Phil. I guess I'll just add one other comment on that question. Um, obviously, the it, it does depend a lot on whether there's information available on the animals uh, that you're using within your breeding program, even though you may not be a, a member of Breed Plan previously. So if you might not have been recording with Breed Plan, but you're using um, a range of AI sires or sires from other herds that you're sourcing from other herds that do or are recording with Breed Plan, all that information will feed into you, the calculation of EBVs on your animals um, once you start up. So you may well find that you have reasonable accuracy when, as soon as you join. Uh, it would just depend um, on how much information is available on the animals within your herd before you start recording uh, through the information which has been recorded in other herds. And then as Philip says, it will then, how long it takes to build up that accuracy will really depend on the individual trait. Um, so we'll move on now. Um, there are a, a few other questions that have just come in there, uh, but we will cover answers to those, I think, in, in the next little while. So we'll now go into, I guess, the the steps that you need to follow if you've decided that you are, uh, are interested in joining Breed Plan. How do you get started? Um, and and ha the first step that you need to follow is you need to join Breed Plan. So, there are a few prerequisites that you need to meet um, before uh, you do join Breed Plan. So th the first thing is the Breed Plan evaluation which is run is all provided through your Breed Society. So you need to be a member of your Breed Society to join in the, the group Breed Plan analyses which are available. Second of all, the, the Breed Plan analysis um, accesses the, the Breed Society databases. So the Breed Plan team um, and the breed societies share a, a, the same database. And basically, the process which you follow is you record your animals with your breed society, and then you record the performance information uh, on those animals with breed plan. And so, for you to record any information with breed plan, then you need to be recording those calves um, with your breed society. Um, so that, they're the, the prerequisites that we have. Um, the enrolment process, the exact enrolment process that you need to follow, providing you're a member of breed plan and you're recording calves, does differ between the different breeds. Um, but the process does generally involve completing an enrolment form and paying an enrolment fee, if that's applicable. Some breeds have uh, enrolment fee to, to join, other breeds do not, depending on what uh, deal the breed society has set up. The important thing about that is if you are interested in joining, um, you need to, I guess my recommendation would be you contact the breed plan office to discuss the particular process in your breed. Generally what will happen is they will um, send you out a brief a kit with some, some basic information which outlines that process that you need to follow. It will have an enrolment form, a, a detailed uh, description of the fees which may apply and you'll then be able to complete that enrolment form send that back, it may come back to breed plan, it may go back to your breed society depending on the different breed um, and but it will all be outlined in that uh, inquiry kind of kit which is sent out to you and you'll also be able to discuss the process that you need to follow uh, with, the, with the staff at breed plan. Um, basically once you've enrolled, um, so you've, you've sent back your enrolment kit, then breed plan will sign you up and you're basically set up and ready to start your recording your performance information. So you've already recorded the, the information on your animals, you'll be set up and ready to go. So in terms of how do you join, I would just contact the Breed Plan office and they'll send you out the information that you need to follow, or the steps that you need to follow. Um, the actual recording process, once you've joined up, can be divided into a number of steps. So if we go through, um, the first step, as I, I, I touched on before, is you need to record your calves with your breed society. So before you do anything with breed plan, you need to make sure that your calves exist on, with your breed society. And as part of that, 
when you do the record your calves, you will record your first set of performance information. So it's important to note you'll need to record a, a date of birth and ideally a, a full set of pedigree. And you do often send in the actual birth performance to your breed society in association with your registration. So any of that information that you send in will land on the breed plan um, database and um, will feed into the breed plan analysis even though you haven't directly um, interacted with the breed plan office. Um, I'll press the button the right way. Um, the second step that you need to follow once you record your calves, um, basically breed plan will then go through regularly and identify that you have recorded calves and send information out to you to start recording the performance information. Now what information they send will depend on how you've told breed plan you're going to submit your performance, which we'll, we'll touch on in a second. Um, if you're going to submit via paper, at this stage breed plan will then send out um, the paper forms to record that performance information and you'll be up and running. So. As soon as you record your calves, breed plan will send you out some information. Um, the next step obviously will be for you to collect the performance information on those calves. And then once you've, you've collected that performance information, the, the first set of performance information, you'll submit that information to breed plan. Now you can submit the information to breed plan as many times as you like um, throughout the year. So some herds will hold up and submit all their information in one go. Others will submit the information as they go, as they record the performance information. It's purely what works for you and what's easiest for you. So there are a number of different methods of submitting that performance information to breed plan. And it's up to you what works for you to, to choose which one of these. So for, for some herds, you'll be able to record it on paper forms. So breed plan will send you out the paper form with all your animal details listed and you'll fill in the performance information on those, whether it be weight, scan information, or the other traits. There are a number of people, people who are doing things electronically now. So there's a number of compatible herd recording programs, such as Herdmaster, Stockbook, and Cattlelink, which you'll use as part of your normal um, maintenance or running of your herd. Any of the information which you've got in there, you have the ability just to do one on one of the menu options, depending on the program, extract that information, the relevant weights or, or performance information, and email that or send that in on disk to, to the breed plan office. You can also, there's a Microsoft Excel template, which is available on the breed plan website. Uh, so on the, the breed plan website, which we'll put the address up in a second, there's a technical area, and through that you'll be able to find the, the different Microsoft Excel templates, which you can use if you're familiar with this way um, to, to send the information in. There is also an internet-based um, submission facility. So with your breed society, uh, many of you will have uh, secure member logins. So you'll have a, a username and a password, and you'll log in through there. And one of the options will be online transactions. And that way, in there, you have the ability to submit your registrations and your weight information um, through your secure login. So there's a number of different um, options available. Really, just comes down to choosing the option which is is the best for you. And then, as I said, you can submit the information uh, as many times a year as you like. Once you've uh, submitted your information, Breed Plan will then go through and process that information and send you back some information, generally containing some updated results. So, the kind of things which Breed Plan will do when they process that information is they may send back um, some queries with the information you've submitted, so either outlining some performance information that hasn't been able to be processed, or some queries that they might have with some of the information. Uh, it's very important as you go along and recall with breed plan that you address those issues, because uh, there are a number of problems do exist when those issues uh, do go unaddressed, um, and down the track they, they come back and um, cause some problems. Generally speaking, when you submit the information, um, depending on when you do it and with, with what breed you are, you will then receive updated EBVs for your calves, so that the calves you've submitted the performance information in, you'll then go through and, and get updated EBVs on those. Um, and if you're submitting performance information on paper, then breed plan will send you out a, a, the next set of forms to record the next set of performance information on those animals. Basically, the next step, obviously, would you need to then go through and collect the next set of performance information on the animals, send that back into breed plan, and follow the same process as you just did. So that, that's the breed plan system's designed effectively, generally, for you to submit that performance as you record it, um, and that would be my recommendation to you when you start to get up, to get up and going. The last step, probably, is, is the fact that you need to be aware of that while you will possibly receive updated EBVs for your calves when you submit information, 
you will then, breed plan will then go through, um, depending on the breed, a number of times a year and calculate or run a group breed plan analysis which updates the EBVs on all the animals, so your size, your dams and all your calves. Now it really does depend on your breed as to how often and how many reports that you receive. Um, just to give you an idea, the, the Angus, Red Angus, Charolais and Brahmin breeds are now over on the, the next generation of technology which is being offered by ABRI and as part of that they run monthly group breed plan analyses. So you submit your performance information, a group breed plan will be, analysis will be run at the end of that month and you receive an updated report um, based with all the updated EBVs for your animals. So you'll receive as, up to 12 reports a year if you submit performance information every month, you'd receive a group breed plan report um, each month. In other breeds, they would generally be running um, between one, two, three and four group breed plan analyses. So if you send the information in throughout the year, you'll get updated EBVs on your calves and then at the next group breed plan analysis that's run, um, you generally receive a report out of that listing updated EBVs for your size and your dams. It really does depend on, on your breed as to how many um, analyses are run and, and what their, their sequence is. To give you an idea, there is a list of uh, dates for the different group runs, group breed plan analyses available uh, on the breed plan website. So again, in the, the technical area, you'll be able to go in and see for your particular breed how many are run, and certainly that kind of information will be sent out once you, enjoy, once you join up with breed plan. Um, in terms of how breed plan will provide those reports to you, um, there are a number of different ways that they'll feed those results back to you. The, the primary form is probably still in paper reports, so you receive an updated report after the group analysis or after the, those, the, uh, you submit your performance information, which has the EBVs of your animals plus a, a range of information relating to the genetic trends of your herd for each of the individual traits and benchmarking you against the breed. A PDF copy of that paper report will also be made available um, in your username and password that's available through your Breed Society file download area, so the same area that you go to submit your performance information online if that's how you choose to do it through the website, there will be an updated PDF of those paper reports available uh, which you can print out and, and use for yourself. The, obviously for the herds that are using the, the uh, compatible herd recording programs as well as being able to submit information to breed plan, you also have the ability to um, uh, upload the updated EBVs on your animals through breed plan will provide you with a file which you can just feed into to the program through one of the menu options and update all the EBVs of your animals. All the EBVs of your animals will also be provided on the Internet Solutions uh, database search facilities. So this is a facility that many of you will be aware of, uh, available through your Breed Society with the EBV inquiry. That you'll also get updated EBVs via that system as they're updated um, each time that a breed plan analysis is run for your animals. Um, I think we'll now break now for questions. We've got a number of different questions um, on that actual recording process. So I'll um, I'll pass back over to Philip. Okay, thanks Andrew. Uh, we have a couple of questions there about the costs, costs involved with, with breed plan, performance recording of the breed plan, but we will be covering that briefly in the next session, so I'll just leave those over till then. Um, some of the other questions that are there, um, what is the performance information required? We've been talking about performance information that's submitted through the breed plan. Basically the performance information that, um, we require is things like your birth, your birth traits, your birth weight, um, your growth traits, so it's a weaning weight, a yearling weight and a, a 600 day or 18 month old weight. Um, it can be your fertility traits, so your scrotal size measurements or days to calving measurements or gestation length for example. Um, it could also be your carcass measurements such as um, such as your fat measurements on your rump and your rib, your eye muscle area and IMF measurements. So they're the performance measurements that are measured on your, your animals within your herd and submitted through to, to breed plan for genetic evaluation. Um, another question there is, is breed plan data transferable to a new owner when a sale takes place? And yes, that, that is correct. Um, if you're using, say if you purchased a, a sire, the EBVs of that sire would go with the animal um, and further information about that sire in terms of his progeny and 
and that their performance, if they were recorded, and then their performance submitted through the breed plan would then strengthen the the estimated breeding value or genetic merit of that sire. So yes, the um, EBVs are transferred and can further be strengthened with additional information about, about that sire or that animal. Um, uh, what is the difference between breed plan and group breed plan? Um, they're the same, essentially the same thing. Group breed plan, we're talking about um, the analysis within a breed but across herds. Um, so that's that's a terminology that relates to the group breed plan. Um, but breed plan is just a generic overall term for the the uh, genetic evaluation system. Um, I think that might do for now, Andrew. We might move on, um, catch up with some other questions as we um, as we progress through. Right, no worries, Philip. Um, and, and I think some of the other questions which we have answered there, hopefully, we'll we'll answer in these next couple of slides. So I guess the, we have, do have a number of questions in there relating to what the cost of of breed plan is. Um, unfortunately, it's it's very difficult to provide an answer. Um, of course, I think this webinar tonight might be going out to members of um, 23 different breeds, and it's not beyond the realms of possibility that there are actually 23 different fee schedules for breed plan. Um, as I said, the the previously the, the breed plan analysis that is conducted um, is offered through your breed society and it will depend on the, the deal that your breed society has with ABRI uh, to provide that information to breed plan and what's been set up. So the, the cost of breed plan really does differ from breed to breed. A, a listing of the, the costs um, or the, the fee schedule for each breed is available on the breed plan website, so I'd encourage you to go in there and find that one. Um, when you go to join, you'll obviously be sent that information out. But through the, the breed plan website, and you've got the address there, um, there, there is a in the technical area uh, there'll be a breed specific documents option. So you go to technical, then to breed specific documents, then choose your breed, um, and that will list the, the fee schedule for your breed. Now. I guess I should say that in terms of the cost of recording with breed plan, those fee schedules will just list the costs uh, which generally are, are, uh, apply through ABRI. Uh, there will be some other costs which you have um, when you record with breed plan. The first one will be your actual breed society costs. So obviously you need to record your animals with your breed society, so any costs that you incur on that front um, will, will contribute to your overall breed plan cost. There may also be a collection, uh, you know, cost to collect the performance records. So, uh, for some of our traits like weight, that, that may not be that great a cost, um, other than labour and, and those things of when you're putting your animals through the yards of actually weighing them. For other traits like birth weight and things, there is a bit more labour involved, so it'd be a higher cost. And if we start getting into some of our carcass traits um, and requiring the, the accredited scanner to come around and collect their information on their eye muscle area and their fat depths and intramuscular fat and things, um, then there'll be a cost associated with actually collecting that performance information. The third cost, which is really the one that the fee schedule relates to, is the actual cost that you will come up with of submitting that information to breed plan and actually getting that information processed through breed plan and the updated EBVs on your animals. Now those breed plan uh, processing costs will be either billed by your breed society or by breed plan, again on a, on a, um, on a breed specific kind of basis, uh, so it's a bit hard to give a generic answer to that. But uh, the, the fee schedules that are available on that breed plan website will give you a good idea as to what those costs are. I think one of the other questions was, uh, if I submit the data electronically, is there a discount for that? Again, it will depend on your breed society. Um, those that are operating off a, a standard breed plan fee structure, there is a discount if you submit that information uh, electronically rather than on paper. Uh, so you do save if you go um, by that means. Um, so that's, that's generally the cost. I guess the last thing I, I'd like to consider is, or, or go through, is just some of the considerations that you need to make when you start recording with breed plants. And when you're first setting up your, your breed plan recording, what are some of the considerations you need to make? Um, the first one you, you need to come down to is to which traits you're going to record. So this comes back to the question which Philip answered before as to what performance information are we talking about. Breed plan does have currently 18 different EBVs and you do have the ability to go through and record performance information relevant to all those 18 different EBVs if you wish. 
In terms of what traits you're going to record when you're considering that, I think you, the recommendation at the start would be to go through, have a look at the EBVs which are available in your breed and decide which of those EBVs are particularly important to you within your breeding objective or to your clients and within their breeding objective and record the performance information that's relevant to those particular EBVs. So I'm unaware of many herds who are recording the full set of, of 18 traits or performance for the 18 EBVs, um, but most will be going through and identifying those traits which they want to select their animals on and recording the performance information behind those. So that's the, the first thing which you need to consider. The second thing which needs to be considered is the kind of whether you have a, the required minimum number of animals to gain effective results from breed plan. Um, really breed plan works, uh, or the basis that it works is by comparing the performance information um, of animals with other similar animals within your herd that have been run under the same conditions and have the same opportunity to perform. If you don't have a, a very large herd, then it can be hard to get a reasonable number of animals or an adequate number of animals for those head-to-head -head comparisons of performance and that can limit the results that you receive from breed plan. So if you are a smaller herd, when you're looking at it's, um, starting off with breed plan, then I would be contacting um, either the breed plan office or the relevant technical officer within SBTS and TBTS to discuss um, how that might apply within your operation. Um, as a rough guide though, they've, they've said if you're recording um, 20 calves or more a particular year with your breed society and those calves are all born within a kind of uh, re reasonably um, tight calving spread, so maybe um, 8 to 10 weeks type of thing, then you'll be have perfectly adequate numbers of calves to record or get effective results from breed plan. But if you're recording less than 20 calves a year, um, then it's probably a consideration that you need to take into account and something you need to discuss uh, with the breed plan office uh, prior to staying your recording. Um, the other question, I think we had a question, um, if you have been recording historic information, so you've been recording performance information in your herd historically, even though you haven't been um, a member of breed plan, can you submit that to breed plan? Certainly as soon as you join, you have the option of submitting all that historic information and that will go into the breed plan analysis and be used in the calculation of EBVs on your animals. So again, I suppose coming back to some of the earlier discussion that we had, how long does it take to get effective results? If you have a, a full set of uh, a reasonable amount of historic information there, then that will obviously boost uh, how quickly you can get um, a, a accurate results from breed plan. So when, if you did have that information, again, I'd be discussing when you join uh, the submission of that information with breed plan uh, to get that into the evaluation. The last thing that you probably need to consider uh, when you're starting to recall with breed plan is the management of your herd and how you can incorporate your breed plan requirements into just your ongoing routine um, management procedures and the, the conduct of your, your um, operations so that breed plan doesn't become um, a significant amount of extra work. And we've seen it, if herds that probably um, get the most out of breed plan and the breed plan is easiest for them are those that do build their requirements into just their ongoing management of their herd and when they're making or planning their operations they take into consideration what their breed plan requirements are and build them in um, and then it's, it's not too much hassle and they get the, the most out of it versus um, herds who probably don't consider when they're managing their herd their breed plan requirements and their breed plan becomes an additional job which may or may not contradict or uh, not be complementary with some of the other management things that they're doing. So I, I would be uh, looking when you're considering to start with breed plan really in building your breed plan requ um, requirements into the ongoing management of your herd um, and also considering how maybe some of the, the management of your herd may impact on the actual results that you're receiving from breed plant. So particularly for some of your smaller herds um, where it's important to maintain those head-to-head -head comparisons, considering what you're doing on farm, whether that is impacting on the amount of head-to-head -head comparisons which are available and therefore the effective results that you're getting um, is something which you need to consider when you're setting up um, your breed plant recording. So that's, that's where I'll leave it and that's, that's the end of uh, the formal presentations for tonight. Um, I guess I'll throw back to Philip now just to uh, go through some of the, the different questions which have come in. Okay, thanks Andrew. Um, yeah, quite a few questions there. Some of them are relating to, to getting useful information out of um, animals that aren't necessarily registered uh, or through a commercial herd. Um, 
probably one question that looks at that. Can useful, useful data be collected from cars with known size but unknown non-registered dams? Um, useful information can be, can be recorded. Um, those those non-registered dams would have to be recorded with the society in some capacity. Uh, that can generally be in the form of a commercial register or a performance register, which is a lower cost than a, a full registered animal. But their uh, progeny and their performance, or their performance of their progeny, can certainly be be used to strengthen the the analysis um, of the of the EBVs for the for the sire. Um, and what's another, another question there? Can you discuss um, how to record details of building up a herd? And some cows are not registered. So basically, the same thing. You, you can you can keep that information and record those those cows through a through a performance or a commercial register and submit through that. And um, as long as they're recorded with that society, you can. Uh, develop uh, useful information in terms of genetic merit on on sires, on dams, and and progeny. Um, another question there is: Are steer EBVs also provided on the internet solutions? Uh, yes, they are. Provided that provided their um, information is recorded and analysed through through breed plan, um, they they are also available on internet solutions. Um, another question there, uh, does the performance need to be done by a vet, such as scrotal, scrotal measurements? Uh, no, that, that's not necessary. Um, the majority of your measurements can be done by the breeder. Um, the only exception to that is, well not the only exception, but one exception to that is um, your carcass traits, uh, which will need like, such as your, your, your fats, your rump and rib, the eye muscle area and IMF will need to be done by an accredited um, scanner. Uh, a list of those accredited scanners can be obtained off the, the breed plan website. Um, there's also other um, requirements for, for looking, measuring structural soundness, um, which is one trait, a newer trait that we'll be discussing at the end of the, the series. Um, that will need to be done by a accredited assessor. But apart from that, the um, majority of the information that, or performance information that's recorded is done by the breeder themselves. Um, I think that's about all the questions there. Andrew, did you want to add anything else to, to that? No, not really, Philip. I mean, I, the only thing I would add is uh, apology regarding the... There are a number of questions there which we haven't had time to answer. Um, obviously, we've we've got well over 100 people in tonight, so um, I, I do apologise that we haven't been able to get to to all those um, all those questions. But um, certainly, please feel free to, to contact um, people or the technical officer within SBTS and TBTS tomorrow to uh, provide an answer to any of those questions which we haven't been able to answer. Well, thanks, Andrew. Um, just a couple other housekeeping issues before we conclude tonight's session. Um, the webinar we've just presented will be will be made available for download off the SBTS and TBTS websites. Um, if you experience any difficulties with with downloading this information or this this webinar, um, please contact Andrew or myself, and we'll be able to look at other options to assist you there. Um, there will also be some uh, written or material emailed out to you that's relevant to tonight's topic. Um, just a reminder also that you will need to to register for upcoming the upcoming um, webinar topics, um, as you have done for tonight's tonight's webinar. Um, and any of those, as Andrew has also mentioned, any of those questions that we couldn't get to tonight because of the time limitations, please feel free to, to contact um, the technical staff to, to assist you with that. Um, so apart from, from myself looking after the, the nine tropical breeds in the north and Andrew, Andrew Byrne looking after Hereford Murray Gray, we have Christian Duff with the Shorthorn, Charolais, Red Angus and Simmertail, Ashley Austin, um, Monty Aquitaine, 
Devon, Red Pole, Solers, South Devon, Peter Parnell with Angus, Alex McDonald with Limousin, and Michael Beatty with the Wagyu. Um, contact numbers for those technical staff are there, and you can also contact the, the Brief Plan office for, for any other information you may require. So on behalf of Andrew and myself, I'd like to, to thank you all for your attendance tonight and look forward to having you attend in the subsequent sessions. Uh, good night from now.